All right, John Baker with Fat Guy Golf. We're back uh, real quick turnaround. Tim is convinced he can help me break 100 because uh, the ball striking is a lot better. Weight update, I'm 457 today, so it, weight's going good. Everything's going good there. Uh, Tim, what's the... Uh, What's the idea today? I'm convinced I can get you to break 90 within three rounds. Okay. When's the last time you broke 90? Probably three years. We're gonna get you to an 89 in three rounds of golf. So maybe not today. Three rounds, so maybe six videos, right? Front yep. nine, back nine, yep. Maybe not today. We're gonna break 100 today. Okay. But I'm gonna get you to that 89 or better within three rounds. Okay. A little bit of strategy, a little bit of technique. We're gonna get you to that 89. Okay, where are we at? We're at Valier and what, what is this? What city are we in? I don't know. We're in Ohio somewhere. Ohio. There you go. Yeah. All right. Let's play golf. Yep. The shot tracer is back. The scoreboard, the score overlay is back. Like Tim said, he's going to help me. Uh, he's basically going to coach me through. What you guys aren't going to see is about 45 minutes of unedited footage of me and Tim walking through each shot uh, to try to make this video a little more watchable. Basically, we talk about distances. We talk about lines. We talk about all that kind of stuff. And... Uh, he basically caddies me the whole time. So we got 138 here for our second shot on number one. And we pull it. Takes a wicked hop off the hill. And it's going to leave me this nasty third shot where I can't see anything. And, you know, we stop our club and we leave it open and we blade it to the right. So, so that's not it. Right not our best. Now we got a long putt for par. So we're just focusing on pace here. So I took a lot of swings and just focusing on the pace, get it the right distance. Uphill right to left. Didn't go to the left. So, all right, bogey. Let's let's get it in. There you go. So we're one over after one. To break ninety, we got to go. You know, plus one on every hole, and then par one. So that's the idea. But we're not we're not worried about that until the third episode. So number two here, second fine drive in a row. Uh, some of the drives are long, some of the drives are short. The wind was howling at like 20, to 20 miles per hour, so. Oh. Yeah. That's a typical room on all sides. All right, drop three, hitting four. Got a lot of green to work with. And I just flip my wrist under it, and it's going to land short. Okay. Super frustrating. All right, so now we're, we're pitching with the pitching wedge. So Tim wants me to land the ball on the green as fast as possible and let it roll. I blade this, but it's okay. So we use the pitching wedge. We hit a very bad shot, but it ends up being okay because of the speed. So who knows? Maybe he's on to something. All right, for the double. It all felt weird. So I'm keeping my wrist very firm. I, uh, I'm, I you know, I'm focusing on not using my hands at all. And I always use my hands. So it's really, really weird. Uh, we're going to call this the golf improvement series. <laughs> you know, kind of try to get better here. Uh, another good drive on number three. Just drivers going well. So 130 yards, a little uphill. Uh, second shot, I'm going to hit an 8-iron. Uh, if any of you remember, a few years ago, my 8-iron was my 110 club. So, you know, this one goes about 120, 120 plus with a little wind in our face. Right now, my 8-iron, I'm usually playing like a 135 club. So we had a long putt for birdie. Again, just really focusing on pace, picking the line, and just trying to hit at the right speed. One of the tough things here was playing this course after playing Shale Creek. Shale Creek is a much tougher course. They roll their greens a lot tighter. Uh, Tim, on the front, he shoots a 37 with, God bless him, but like 18 or 19 pots. So, you know, it, it was really, really hard to putt. It, it just, after playing Shale and having to tap everything, it made everything really, you know, to get the speed down. It was just, it took a, it took a while. Um, number one ends up in a bad spot. Look at this. Wicked lie. Grabbed the five iron. Got my body against the tree to try to stop myself from breaking my arms. We had a good shot. That's, that's as good as you can do from there. So, 
Nothing wrong with that. 108 yard shot. I grab a pitching wedge. Uh, you know, I'm trying to. I'm thinking if I just if I have to commit myself to every shot, and I do this thing where I just. And if you guys are new, aren't new to my channel, you know I'll scoop underneath it and I'll flip my wrist and hit a really bad shot. And this one is the pin sitting really close to the front. So I'm going to try to bump it in the in the first cut of grass and let it trickle up. That's the idea here. I miss by about five feet. And it stays right in the right in the rough, right in the first cut of the rough. So we're going to putt from here. Uphill. We just had a bad line. We thought it was going to break to the right. It didn't. So that's a double. We're plus seven through, uh, what is that, four holes. So it's not good. So finally we get to a par three. Valier starts off with four par fours, so it's kind of annoying. So we get a par three, 168 yard hole. I try to hit a five iron. Um, <laughs> I try to pretend I'm tougher than I am and can actually get that distance. I'm still not there yet. Still hitting the ball a little too high. So we tried to see if I could get my, it's 168 to the pin. I tried to see if I could get a five iron there. I'm right off the front of the green, so I don't have that distance yet. All right, so we tested out the muscles a little bit. It's not there. Got a little more work to do. All right, so we got our second shot. This is from the, it's just off the green. So we got the pitching wedge back out. I still feel super uncomfortable with that. And that's where it rolled to. So I got this for par. And if you heard that thunder in the back, that's, we're going through a storm right now. So here's the par putt. Boom. High step it, big man. High step it. There it is. Needed a three. Needed it. Needed it real bad. So now we get to a par five, 450 yards. There's water at 205, and you got to hit like 230 to clear. So I hit a five wood. Try to hit it easy. Lay off it. Shoot it to the right. Terrible. Try to play the safe game. Goes terrible. You know? It's usually how it works out. So now I got this impossible shot that I can't get behind. I can't do anything with. Tried to hit it. Thought about hitting it left-handed. Grabbed the club. Swung it left-handed. Didn't work. So now I'm just pissed. So I grab a three-wood. I'm like, I'm just going to blast up there. Try to hit a cut. Because the hole's all the way to the right. Right under the distance here. And it doesn't work. So I'm like 220 out here. I'm now 178 out because I basically went to the left. We grab a hybrid from 178. We hit it well. We're up there over the bunker. This is a terrifying shot. Tight pin, downhill lie, over a bunker, and... Oh! Couldn't be more lucky. What am I talking about? That's all skill. All skill. All right, long putt for bogey. Uphill, I think, right to left. Just not enough pace. Just everything was a little bit short. All right, so we got our double. Just lock it in. Get in there. Plus nine through six. Oh, this is not a hot start. All right. Downhill, par five, 460. Tim said that I could easily carry the water. So basically coming back after the other par five, and I hit a uh, – I tried to hit it as hard as humanly possible, and I hook it. Bounces short of the water, hops over the water, rolls up, gives me this. So the idea here is hit it up the cart path, hit it with a little bit of fade. The green is on the right side of those trees back there. So we're just focusing. And we hit it really good. We had a really good shot here. We didn't know where it landed until we got up there. Must have been the caddy. It's all about contact. So third shot. Good contact. Should be just good. one good pitch shot right is up. all it's going to take. One good pitch. So what do I do? I don't commit to it. I leave my hands open. I get pissed. I tell Tim to give me another ball because I know how to hit this shot. 
And, you know, we're not playing for money or anything. And it's, you know, this is the self-improvement series. So I know I can hit this shot. So we're going to hit it again real and quick just to, to see sure what happens. The ball right here, okay? Don't worry. I don't count this in my score. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's so annoying. Perfect. Of course. As you can see, that's where that ball ended up. So that would have been a fun, nice little birdie, but it doesn't count. So we go back to our ball. <laughs> oh, that stuff makes me so mad when I do that. All right, so we just hit a nice little pitch shot. We know we can hit this. I grab a 56 degree. I don't want to use the pitching wedge anymore. I don't feel comfortable with it. You know, we're plus nine through six. So I'm going back to something I feel a little bit more comfortable with. I'm just trying to feel it in my hands right here. That's all I'm trying to do. Feel it in my hands. Go in. There you go. Tap in par. Finally. Finally. All right. Par three, 138 yards. I grab another eight iron. I'm like, I can hit this as far. And I just pulled a little bit. I hit this thing as hard as I could. You know, not like Bryson hitting eight irons, 238. So I'm, I'm pin high on the left side. Tough little pitch shot. I had a knot of grass behind the ball, and that just made me really scared of it. But I think it made me focus and just make sure that they got through the shot. And I would take that shot 10 out of 10 times. Easy putt coming back from par, right? Easy putt. Straight line. Rolled in. So everything me and Tim were working on for my putting, I did the opposite. I went back to my regular grip and I pulled my right hand over. So I caught it off the toe and I came across the clothes and I pulled it because I didn't think I could mess it up within five feet like that. Uh, that's just why I'm a 20 plus handicap and he's a, uh, you know, three or four. And that's why you're shooting, what, even part of the day still? Plus one? I think I'm one over. One over? He's one over. Yeah, that's why. So number nine, we're plus 10. That's a 46 if we par out. That'd be a 90. What is it? I'm not good at math. 92 if we double it. So drive's good. A little bit short. Wind was straight into us. Second shot, 220 in. Wind is straight into me again. I'm just trying to blast a three wood here. And it catches that tree branch and comes straight down. Oh, I hit it so hard too. So we have this for a third shot. A little weird in between. 60 yard shot. Pins tucked back left. I got a mound to go over. Perfect swing. You're at least up around it. Oh, look who cuts his swing off. Hits a, it's a terrible shot. Fourth shot. Tim's now on me like a hawk. I pull it really bad about. 10 yards left get a really nice hop and roll down to the hole so it bounces all the way down the rough onto the green so we got this putt for bogey plus 11 that put me on pace for 94 absolutely terrible read i thought it was left to, I, I thought it was right to left and it was left to right so let's tap in our double. We're going to be plus 12. In the conclusion part, we're going to say we were plus 11. Me and Tim missed a drop we had. That's the nice thing about filming. You go back and you catch it. All right, so that's end for part one of me trying to get back to breaking 100. Uh, shot 47 on pace for 94. Don't forget you can follow on Instagram at the Fat Guy Golf and on TikTok at John Baker 2575 Tim, what's your recap for your caddying of me? How do you feel about what's going on so far? I like that you're trying what I'm asking you. Okay. I know it's uncomfortable, and it's going to take a few rounds. Very. But 47 isn't bad. And yeah. there were a couple of shots there um, that were really close to being very good. I, I feel like it was more like a 44 or 45, which is right on pace with what we want. Okay. Be back for part two.